Hi everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the EnergyCast studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at August's top stories. The Oak Ridge Research Reactor Vessel has left the building. Stay tuned as we bring you updates on the largest deactivation project happening at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Plus, a new face is leading DOE's environmental cleanup program. Candace Robertson brings more than 20 years of experience to the position. She sat down with us in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview to share more about her goals for the future. And interest in the nuclear field is surging. Businesses and the next generation of workers showed up in big numbers for the Nuclear Opportunities Workshop in Knoxville. We hear from industry leaders about what this means for East Tennessee. And our big story this month, exciting news from the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Team members with cleanup contractor UCOR reached a significant milestone at one of the largest deactivation projects at the site. They successfully removed the lower half of the reactor vessel from the Oak Ridge Research Reactor. Our cameras were there to capture this incredible achievement and the celebration firsthand. It's a major milestone. A crew's lifted and removed the lower reactor vessel from the Oak Ridge Research Reactor, paving the way for the facility's upcoming demolition. The success of this operation is no small feat. You got a reactor out of a building, out of a pool, in a cask, and it's going to be going down the road this afternoon. That's a big deal. Workers used a 72-inch diamond wire saw to cut the final pieces that held the reactor in place at the bottom of the reactor pool. Then they used a 20-ton crane to lift that equipment and load it into a protective cask to ship it for disposal off-site. I don't think any other team could have done it. These guys are just unbelievably awesome. And the way they pulled together and, and headed in the right direction, like I said earlier, is second to none. A UCOR cut and removed the top portion of the reactor vessel last fall. Since then, crews filtered and drained thousands of gallons of water from the pool and safely removed radioactive materials to prepare for this extraction. It took an immense amount of planning and careful execution for employees to complete the work safely. Because it's a research reactor, there weren't as-built drawings for this facility, and we've had to do a number of compensatory actions to get through that. The primary one is We've had to drain the pool, lower the pool level, and cut everything in the dry, as opposed to in the wet and the, the controls that we've put in place. How the work crews have been able to, to resolve those problems and get to this point has been a tremendous effort. And following the successful removal, leadership showed their appreciation by hosting a cookout. They commended the workers' persistence through such a complex and challenging process. Typically, the, the deactivation takes longer than the actual demolition of the facility, so it'll take several years to, to completely deactivate the facility. Uh, removing the reactor is, the, the, is one of the first major uh, milestones in, in doing that, but there's several other activities that will follow the removal of the reactor and then eventually allow for us to safely demolish the facility. This achievement marks a significant step in the ongoing efforts to safely dismantle and clean up the facility. The process of preparing the reactor facility for demolition will continue with the deactivation of thousands of feet of piping. This project is part of EM's ongoing effort to transform ORNL's central campus to support future research missions. All right, Ian's new senior advisor, Candace Robertson, visited Oak Ridge in her first weeks on the job. And while she was here, we had the opportunity to sit down with her for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Robertson tells us about the experience she brings to the role and her goals for DOE's cleanup program. A summer dash takes us inside their insightful conversation. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I am here with Candace Robertson. You are the new senior advisor for EM. This is week we determined five or six on the job, so how's it been going so far? 
Oh, it's been great. I've, I've worked most of my uh, career in the Office of Environmental Management, and so being given the opportunity to lead the program at this level is a, is a real honor. Um, and I've already been able to um, speak virtually with the employees at Hanford, as well as visit both Los Alamos and Oak Ridge, uh, and of course, uh, visit with my senior leadership team across the complex and the employees at headquarters. So it's been it's been a really um, fun and uh, engaging for several weeks on the job. Uh, and then in terms of your past experience, you mentioned lightly earlier that you've had some federal experience and obviously been through several different DOE programs. Tell us a little bit about your uh, background and how that shaped you to take on this role now. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I actually got my start as a local elected official in Nevada, um, where we had a couple of DOE nuclear sites located. And so that's how I became conversant and interested in these issues. And since then, I've been able to work for the Department of Energy, both in the field and at headquarters, across two different program offices, uh, serving as the Chief Human Capital Officer, working for three different deputy secretaries across three different presidential administrations, um, and even doing a stint at the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission as a, as a chief of staff to one of the commissioners. And within EM, I've been able for the last decade uh, to serve in many meaningful senior executive roles, leading nearly every aspect of the operations, which is, I think, really equipped me for the role that I'm in now. Wow, a lot of experience and a lot of different pieces that, that probably led you here today. Yes. Fantastic. Um, and as we move forward, we always like to ask our new leadership team members, what are your goals going forward? Uh, my goal is to continue the steady beat of progress that EM has been making over the last several, several years uh, and to make sure that we are continuing to engage with and build the relationships with all of the uh, people of EM, which is not just the workforce, so that's obviously a critical component, but uh, our industry partners, our uh, tribal and community leadership and, uh, you know, everybody else who's just really interested in the program, as well as also finding ways to uh, retain our world-class workforce and attract and train the next generation so that we can be prepared for continued success moving into the future. Well, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for your time. I know you've had a busy few weeks and a busy trip here, so we really appreciate it. Thank you. And we've got more from that interview with Candace Robertson on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for energy extras and more exclusive stories. All right, mission accomplished. That's the word from the East Tennessee Technology Park. As crews excavated the last scoop of contaminated soil from the site earlier this month. Following the completion of demolition in 2020, this wraps up a years-long effort to finish soil remediation at ETTP. In total, crews removed more than 550,000 cubic yards of soil. That equals nearly 50,000 dump truck loads. This marks the end of major field work at the site. Congressional, state, and local leaders gathered to celebrate that accomplishment at ETTP last week. Now, reaching that milestone makes it possible for EM to transfer hundreds of acres to the community to attract new businesses. With soil remediation finished, EM is nearing its ultimate vision to transform the site into a multi-use industrial park. So far, EM has transferred more than 1,700 acres for new economic development. That land is now home to 25 businesses that are bringing in more than $1 billion in investments. We'll have much more coverage from this event in our September episode. As small businesses play a big role when it comes to cleanup projects in Oak Ridge. EM contractor UCOR recently hosted its annual Small Business Awards event to recognize the top performing companies and recognize their contributions. Since 2022, UCOR has awarded 85% of its subcontracted work to small businesses. That's good for more than $550 million. We attended this year's ceremony to learn how these companies are supporting key cleanup and infrastructure projects across the reservation. This year's top award went to CTI and Associates. So using the Landfill 5 expansion as an example, uh, CTI came up with a, a scheduled recovery plan to, uh, to help aid uh, UCOR into getting their Landfill 5 expansion uh, in a in a quicker, more expeditious manner 
to, to help support D&D &D operations. And this year's top recipients included Sea Chine Associates, Alut Demolition Services, Impress Technology Solutions, Bar Technical Services, Drum and Carpenter, and Premier Contracting and Technical Services. And more details about the winners are available at energy.gov slash OREM. We have even more exciting news coming out of the East Tennessee Technology Park. A Kairos Power has begun construction on its Hermes demonstration reactor. The company is constructing that facility on land EM previously cleared and transferred for economic development. This is part of a $100 million investment that's expected to generate 55 new jobs at the site. We spoke with their co-founder and CEO earlier this year when the company received approval of its construction permit. For us, it's not just about opportunity, it's really about a need. Um, and for us, if nuclear is going to play an important role in decarbonizing, it really needs to be moving quickly to be ready and it needs to be able to scale. If you missed our previous coverage earlier this year about Kairos' plans at ETTP, go check that out on our YouTube channel. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more exclusive stories. Finding a workforce may be the nuclear industry's biggest challenge. The Consortium for Risk Evaluation with Stakeholder Participation, or CRESP, recently held a workshop at Vanderbilt University to address recruiting in a rapidly growing industry. Participants represented all sectors of the nuclear environmental industry. There was a lot of surveying that was done. They were asked to identify and rank the technical and socio-technical competencies that are critical for students to understand today. We heard from PhD candidate Sue Magidson about what needs to happen to ensure educational programs are aligned with government and industry needs. I think the key really is collaboration amongst the, the government agencies private industry and academia. I think it takes all three uh, parties to collaborate and work together to develop opportunities and programs that will benefit the industry. OREM Chief Engineer Laura Wilkerson also attended the workshop and talked about working to engage and attract students to this field of study. Having a presence at the universities, collaborating and, and having one-on-one -on -one interactions with the administrators, the, the uh, educators, and the students to make sure that we're all aligned towards the same goal of making sure that they have uh, develop the skills that we need to uh, to meet our needs. The results of the workshop surveys will be factored into developing a curriculum guide that should be completed in 2025. A local conference focused on the nuclear industry has doubled its attendance in recent years. Our team headed to Knoxville to learn more about some of the reasons behind the growing interest and in popularity. Energy Cast to Sierra Hellemans has more from this year's Nuclear Opportunities Workshop. With the need for clean energy on the rise, the nuclear industry is, well, booming. And it's happening here. Because of that, industry leaders, business professionals, and students were all buzzing with excitement at the East Tennessee Economic Council's sixth annual Nuclear Opportunities Workshop. This year, nearly 200 businesses and organizations and 600 attendees gathered at the Hilton Knoxville Airport. Tracy Boatner, ETEC's president, says they've nearly doubled their attendance the past four years. We sort of already have an industry cluster here. So we have our core folks like our Y12 and ORNL and TVA, but then once newer companies like Kairos Power started announcing, and then we had Triso X announce, Ultra Safe Nuclear, you know, everyone wants to be close to industry that is successful, I think, and, and you feed off of each other. And if you, you join that with the assets that we have at the lab and Y12, then it just creates these synergies and people want to be a part of those. Though industry leaders aren't the only ones taking notice, the next generation of workers are too. 160 students came to network and learn, tripling last year's numbers. 
a growth that the American Museum of Science and Energy's Marketing and Communications Director, Matt Mullins, has seen firsthand. In the past couple of years, this conference has really evolved because the people that began this conference are still here, but there's a new generation of people with a very dynamic mindset, and they're really interested in evolving the technology, pushing the technology into a new space, where used to you would have a gigantic footprint of this nuclear power source. That's changing. It's a new mindset. It's a new vision and new goal. And at this point, you have people who are interested in clean energy, efficient energy, and dynamic power sources. And that's what this conference is bringing to the public. While the conference is revealing a surge of interest in the nuclear field, it's also equipping students and business leaders to maintain growth and create new opportunities. This year's content focused on topics like innovative uses of nuclear, energy security, artificial intelligence, policy regulation, advanced reactors, and more. To learn more about the NOW conference and nuclear opportunities in East Tennessee, head over to etechonline.org. We've got some big stories planned for you next month. We'll have conversations with state and national leaders and much more coverage from our Vision 2024 event at ETTP. You will not want to miss it. And remember, if you work in environmental management in Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. We'd love to feature what matters to you right here. Email your idea to oakridgeem at orem.doe.gov. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post a show on our YouTube channel. Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more in it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. And thank you so much for joining us. New episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.